Hello, I wanted to have a chat about English paper piecing. It's something I really, really love and I've been sharing some of my English paper piecing on my podcast at the moment, which is So Sweet Violet. My name is Jules, that might be helpful to say, and yeah, just wanted to have a little chat and show you how I do my English paper piecing. I've had a few people asking me about English paper piecing lately, so I thought I'd just make a little tutorial on how I do it and other ways of doing it as well. So, English paper piecing. So this, let me show you one example. So this is English paper piecing. Oops, let me show you the right way up. This is the back. Um, and this is made up of lots and lots of hexagons. These are tiny ones. So, first of all, this is, let me show you some examples of English paper piecing. That might be a good idea to get going. So this is English paper piecing. This is my rainbow baby quilt. Um, I've only got four more rows to add to this, actually. So I'm quite excited. Let me show you the back. I've removed some of the papers, which I'll talk about in a minute. You can kind of see through the fabrics that have no papers in. If you're working on a big project, it's quite nice to take the papers out so it's a bit more floppy, otherwise it's a bit unwieldy. So that's another English paper piecing. Um, and there's this little decoration I made. It's in a glass frame. Don't know how well the camera's gonna pick that up because of the reflection. And I left the back like this with the papers in. Um, and I'm also making a quilt, which I thought I bought the booklet for, but. And this is also an example of English paper piecing. These, I call them flowers when they come together like this. And it starts off with a hexagon in the center. And then whatever this shape is here, a triangle and then a diamond. And it's amazing with English paper piecing, there are so many shapes that just fit together. Um, today I'm just talking about hexagons, but there's lots and lots and lots of variations. There's squares, octagons, hexagons, diamonds, it's endless. So what do you need for English paper piecing? Well, first off, you need some fabric and you need some hexagon papers. I like my papers fairly thick. I don't like, I wouldn't use copier paper. It's just not um, stiff enough. You want something when you fold the fabric over, it's gonna give you a nice crisp edge. So this is a 160 grams card. Um, I cut these using my Sizzix machine, which is this. Oh, it's quite hefty. It's called a big shot. Let's show you the side with the writing on. It's called a big shot, and you can buy dies to go in it to cut different size hexagons. You can also buy dies for squares and diamonds and all the other shapes I mentioned. Um, I think I've only got hexagons and squares actually, but with a die cutting machine, you get perfect cutting every time. So every hexagon is the same because you have to be very, very precise with paper piecing. You can also buy packs of these pre-cut. There's lots and lots of online haberdashery and kind of craft stores that would sell these. Um, what else can you do? You can also print off, go onto Google, type in um, one inch hexagon template or sheet maybe, and you'll get lots, if you go on images, you'll get lots and lots of images, and you can print out those sheets and cut them out with scissors. You do have to be very, very precise though, because the edges, the edges need to be exactly the same on each hexagon, so you get a really crisp join. To know the size of your hexagon, you measure an edge. 
and these ones measure one and three quarter inches. So this is a one and three quarter inch hexagon. Um, you can get teeny tiny ones. I think I've got, I've definitely got quarter inch. I might even have an eighth of an inch. They are minute, but they're really fun to make. And um, let me measure this one here. These are quite tiny. So these are three quarter inch hexes. And what are these ones? These ones on my rainbow quilt are two inch hexes. So for instance, if you were wanting to make this with two inch hexagons, you'd need to buy, cut, whatever you were doing, lots of two inch paper hexagons. Also another point on the hexagon templates, the paper templates, you don't have to use new card, you can recycle old envelopes, as long as they've got a bit of sturdiness to them, um, get lots of flyers don't you advertising different companies you can cut those up they're perfect weight okay so that's all about the papers and the size so when you're thinking about the fabric for your English paper piecing your fabric will need to be well I would say a good half an inch bigger than your paper piece so let me show you and there's a quarter inch overlap, roughly. It doesn't have to be exact at all because all this is going to be hidden. So you'll need, so let's say this is, let's say this is two inches. Your fabric will need to be two and a half inches or around about that. And again, you can use die cutters, which is how I cut mine, or you can cut them with scissors and I'll show you that in a minute. Originally, English paper piecing, I've always known it as patchwork actually, I've done it ever since a child, I've always loved it, I just love little bits of fabric, but I think originally it was kind of to use up scraps, old clothes, old shirts, curtains, any old scrap fabric, and it was a way of making something new out of lots of old things that you could still salvage bits from. If you wanted to buy fabric, you could buy some fat quarters, You'll get quite a lot of hexagons out of the fat quarter. You could um, treat yourself to a charm pack, which are normally little tiny squares. They're perfect. Um, you can also quite often find pre-cut shapes. Places like Etsy and eBay, there are sellers selling fabrics that are already pre-cut. You just have to remember to get the fabric bigger and the hexagon that you want to make. I'm going to pop in a little video here of three different ways of basting, which means attaching your fabric to your card shape. Um, there are three different ways of doing it as far as I know and I'll chat a bit more about that now. These are the three ways of basting your English paper piecing templates. So first up is the way I've traditionally done it, which is stitching it. Um, some people, let me show you this is another option, some people stitch through the card as well as the fabric like here. I don't do this because when you've finished your actual quilt or your cushion or your your English paper piece project you'll have to go back and snip all these stitches and pull them out which I think is a bit of an annoying job. The benefit of doing this way is that it keeps your papers completely in place if you wanted to um, have the stability in your project when you're working on it. Maybe if it was a bit more of a complicated design with different shapes. I'm not really sure. I don't use this way of doing it, so I'm not really sure of the benefits. But there obviously are some because lots of people do this. So this is stitched all the way through the fabric and the card. And the last way is a much newer way, and it's glue basting. And you use a glue pen. Uh, this is a Soline glue pen, and it's just it's just tacky enough to hold your fabric onto the card. And it's washable, so once you've finished, you take your paper pieces out. They come out fairly easily, actually. Um, the glue is not strong enough to kind of keep the paper in permanently. 
um, and then you take it out and if you're washing a project this washes out so I love these I think this is going to be my new way of doing them I'm going to show you how to do the stitched basting technique these are my favorite and preferred needles they are amazing I bought my daughter some for her birthday and she gave me one to use and they are like it's like using a little rocket it made my paper piecing go so much quicker and they're so smooth I love them absolutely love them so I'm gonna get one of these needles out they also come in the cutest little vial with a cork so sweet and it keeps your needles really safe Right, I find these little clips really useful. Place your paper template in the middle of your fabric. Just fold over one edge and just clip it. It's just to keep it in place Oops. while you're stitching. So, all we need to do is fold over the corner really neatly. You want to be really neat when you do this and keep the edges really nice and straight. And I'm using my polyester cotton thread, tied a knot in the end, and I've just done a tack in the corner. So we just need to work our way around. So fold in the side, tuck over the corner, really neatly as you can, as close to the card as you can, and just do a little tack in the corner and then another one. This is so enjoyable. It's something lovely to do sitting out in the garden or listening to an audio book. It's just, I find it very therapeutic. And then when you get to the last corner, do exactly the same. I'll just do one extra and just knot it off. I just put my needle through the loop, and knot it off and then cut your thread. And that's our stitch basted hexagon. Let's do the glue basted hexagon. So all you do with this one, you just run a little bit of glue close to the edge of your paper piece and fold your fabric over, it's so easy. And then start on the corner of the fabric and, well I didn't do that very well, close to the edge and fold that one over. Always start on the edge of the fabric because if you go this way you tend to get a clump of glue that gathers under the fabric so I always go on the fabric along the side and fold it over. Oh this is so easy, <laughs> such a dream. You could make hundreds of these couldn't you in the same time it take you to stitch baste although there definitely is a place for stitch basting actually really like it. I think if I was doing completely white fabric or very very pale fabric I think I would stitch based because the glue seems fine I haven't had any trouble with it but it is blue isn't it so I think I wouldn't risk it but for pattern fabrics it's amazing so there we go that is the glue based hexagon and it's so easy. So the last one to do is the one that's stitched through the fabric and the card. Okay, so for this one, we'll need our little clip back again. You don't have to use the clip. You can use um, a paper clip or anything, or just hold it with your fingers, but just gives a little bit of stability. 
So I think I'm going to start over here. So I'm going to make my first fold here. The only reason I didn't start here is I didn't want my thread to get tangled around the clip. So this time you make your fold in the corner nice and neat and you go from the front through the card and the fabric like that. So it's very similar to the, the way of basting where you just go through the fabric but we're just going through both the fabric and the card. So you go from the front to the back through all the layers and just do a little tack in each corner. So it's really easy, it's as easy as the other methods. Just not one I, I've used before. I'm sure there must be a benefit to doing this. If anybody knows, I'd love to find out. We'll take our little clip off. Also, with doing this kind of basting, when you're going through the fabric and the card, I would always use a bright or very different coloured thread to your fabrics so that when you finish your project it will be so much easier to see the threads to unpick them all. See that just seems like another big job to me. Perhaps I'm just lazy. Coming to the last corner. And just finish this one on the front by just doing it. I'd just do a little knot. You could just do an extra stitch, really. I don't think it has to be a knot. Oops. So there we go. That's that one. I just need to cut my thread. So you can see the stitches on that one. We now have our hexagons basted. So now it's time to stitch them together. With hexagons, there's two alternatives. So there's a hexy flower, which this is a hexy flower. And this gorgeous bag was a gift from a lovely friend of mine called Ali. Um, she used to be called Jammy Pudding and Custard, but I don't think she makes bags anymore, which is sad. But this is a little hexy flower. That's what I call it anyway. So it's one hexagon in the middle and six around the outside. And you can make lots and lots of these lovely little hexagon flowers and sew them together when you've got a, a lovely stack of them. You can also do them in rows, which is how I'm doing this rainbow baby quilt. So how I would sew this, you can see I'm stitching this one here now, so I would fold the fabric over. Sometimes you'll have to fold a card, which is absolutely fine, and stitch along here. And then once that line's stitched, see so that will be stitched down there, then you can add another hexi in. Or you can sew a complete row of hexagons and then join the rows to the main project. And that's another way I do it too. My favourite thread to sew with is cotton polyester. I would really love to sew it with cotton, but I do find the thread breaks quite easily. So my preferred thread is definitely polyester cotton blend. Um, I generally always use white or it depends what colour hexagons. I generally sew pastel-y kind of colours, but even so, I've got some red on here actually. And these were sewn with white thread. And I'm going to show you a technique that I use to stitch my hexagons, which keeps... Well, I find it stops the stitches showing on the front so much. It kind of keeps the stitches away. Um, but I'll show you that now. This is how I stitch my hexes together. I think I use a different kind of stitch than most people I've seen do English paper piecing. And I learned this technique a long, long time ago from somebody else. And I cannot for the life of me remember who it was. But it's not my invention. So, to sew them together, put the right sides of the fabric facing each other and line your corners up really neatly. 
and you just want to take just a few strands of fibre on each of your fabric hexagons, starting right in the corner. I do one stitch like that, and now the next time I go in, I do, I guess it's like a blanket stitch, so I'll put my needle through, I'll wrap my thread around the front of the needle, and pull it up, and I'll carry on like that, all the way along. Stitches don't need to be massively close together, I guess mine are about four millimetres. And by doing this, I guess it is blanket stitch, just because it doesn't look like blanket stitch when it's finished particularly. And by doing the stitching in this way, I'm going to see if I can get a really good close-up. It might be a photo I might have to add here. You can see there's a little bar of stitches along the top. I'm going to put in a photo here. And that line of stitches seems to pull the threads away from the fabric so that when you turn the fabric over, the stitches are pretty much invisible. These needles are just amazing. These are Hiroshima milliner's needles and they're made by Tulip. Yes, I just, I love them. They're just, as I said, they're like little rockets. So I'm nearly at the corner again. So it'll be time to add another hexi or whatever shape you may be using. There we go. So let's add another one. This would make a pretty flower, especially with the yellow in the centre. Um, so we add another one. Your design might be directional, which means you'll probably want all your fabrics facing the same way. But I'm never that fussed with English paper piecing. I think just do it how it looks pretty. So we are going to fix the next one on. So I'm going to use this as my centre. So I'm going to put the two sides together. Then I'm going to stitch up here break the thread and then I will stitch along there. So I'll do that and I'll put the fast forwards on. I always do a little knot when I come to breaking off my yarn. So I just do the same again where I put my needle through my loop and just pull it nice and tight. And then snip it. Tie another knot. And now we're going to stitch this join along here. So we'll need to fold this one, this paper and fabric here, just gently and then we can turn it round and it's easy for us to sew. When it comes to taking your templates out, don't take them out if you need to stitch one next to that particular shape because you need the the card in place to give it stability so you can get a nice straight edge. Only start taking the cards or papers, whatever you're using, out when that particular piece is surrounded. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, you get the idea and um, yeah, I will carry on with this. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Bye.